The tonsils and palate are intimately associated with obstructive sleep apnea and snoring, as the area behind the palate is usually the throat's narrowest point. Patients with OSA usually have an excessive amount of flaccid tissue in the oropharynx that can block the airway during sleep. Surgery aims to stiffen this area and decrease tissue redundancy while preserving the anatomy. In most cases, a combination of surgical procedures is done in order to rearrange the pharyngeal wall and to open the airway, decreasing the possibility of collapse. Sometimes, a procedure called a preservation uvulopalatopharyngeoplasty is indicated as part of your treatment course. It is interesting to note that this is the most commonly performed sleep surgery procedure worldwide. The surgery consists of tonsillectomy and tissue rearrangement at the uvula, palate, and throat walls in order to increase the airway size and decrease tissue collapse. Initially described several decades ago, this technique has been refined with several modifications to minimize possible long-term side effects such as swallowing problems, voice changes, or permanent feeling of a foreign body in the throat. Sometimes, a preservation uvulopalatopharyngoplasty, also known as a UPPP, may be done as preparation for optimization of future procedures. For example, a preservation UPPP is often done in order to convert a concentric collapse pattern into an anteroposterior collapse or no collapse at all. This conversion allows patients to become candidates for upper airway stimulation, otherwise known as hypoglossal nerve stimulation. Tonsil and palate surgery fall within phase 1 of the updated Stanford sleep surgery algorithm. Upon completion of this phase, Dr. Leo will reassess the severity of your disease. This is typically done with a sleep study six months postoperatively. This will help Dr. Leo decide whether progression to phase 2 surgery is necessary.